don't really know if I would say I'm an expert. I know that I have experience. Okay, so I've raised two kids. What I found is this became far too common, that our youngest generations were distracted constantly by devices, games, or phones. Okay. And there were two key moments for me that really brought me to where I am tonight to talk to you. And I want to share this with you briefly. One is I was working with one of my clients, and he confessed that on a Saturday when his parents were home, he played Mortal Kombat, a video game, for nine hours straight. Okay? He admitted that afterwards, he didn't feel too hot. He was kind of exhausted, didn't feel right, kind of depressed, but he spent nine hours playing that video game. And I, when we finished our session, I, I thought about it for a long time, and I thought, how does somebody do that? How do they even a young person to devote nine hours to one activity, right? When it's so hard to even get them to sit down, right? And then I remembered that I had my own experience. So what did I do? I binge watched that show for two days. I felt the exact same way that that youngster felt. I didn't feel good at it. But I succumbed to it readily. We have this online disinhibition effect. People get online and they call it getting drunk, not drinking. They lose their inhibition. They say things and do things that they normally wouldn't do offline. This is real. Schadenfreude. People enjoying and taking ple seeking pleasure and enjoy finding pleasure in other people's suffering. That is very real in our society today. And we have cyberbullying. We have shaming. We have this cancel culture. All of this is really being propagated online, okay? Through the social media platforms. We have increased depression, anxiety, self-harm, suicide among our youngest generations. In the left-hand corner, this gentleman has the first digital camera. Look how handy that deal is. Uh, the first Apple computer. So this is the 70s, okay? Let's go look at the next, another decade. Here's the 90s. Look how even in 20 years, the advancements are just exponentially further than where we were, right? We have the internet, Palm Pilots, uh, Adobe uh, Photoshop, handheld Game Boys in color, the first Nokia cell phone, Google was invented in the 90s, MP3 players, those guns with cords, that's PlayStation. Okay, so these are the guns that our kids are playing are the games that our kids are playing. Now, air taxis. When were, when were these inventions created? When did this happen? What decade? 2000. 2000? Anyone else? Yeah. One year. This was two years ago. Catch up to manage it. So anything unchecked can be dangerous. Even love. Right? I, I had to think about that one for a while, but anything unchecked can be dangerous. So overexposure on social media, excessive gaming, the fear of missing out. This is a whole new, it's not a syndrome, it's a dynamic. People feel like they're missing out if they're not always on their device or on their phone. This intermittent immediate gratification. Now look, this is a psychological term. When you reinforce by giving something to someone at the right time and it's pleasurable for them, it is done purposefully, right? And not always for the betterment of that individual. It happens through these algorithms and the activity tracking. Once you sign up, you are theirs. And they're gonna track everything you do, where you search it, technology. But our youngest generations, they don't have, they don't have the willpower, they don't have the systems yet for themselves to, to handle that. They don't know how to handle hard enough for us, but if we don't rein it in and control it, where will we be? This is what I talked to my friends about. Where will we be in 10 years? Will we even talk to each other? You know, great, right? Social isolation, and lastly, if you feel, you just can't seem to function without your device, and you feel better when you have your device, okay? The physical response, okay. So let's, let's go deeper. And this is really uh, talking about our children now, okay? So the, this is where that dopamine release happens, okay? 
This is, so if you like something, you want more of it. You, you get that release. If you don't like something, you avoid it. It happened in this part of your brain. Now, this is what I mentioned earlier, this intermittent immediate gratification, okay? Imagine now, if, if you're young, okay? And again, you don't really have the experience yet to know what to avoid or what to be careful from, right? Or be careful of. This is very difficult for them when they get that pleasurable response all the time, or at the right time, they want more, okay? Now, it's been proven that there may not be an addiction gene, okay? So they've been researching this for years. As of now, there still is no addiction gene. However, many of us are predisposed to dependency, okay? Now, when we, again, when we do anything enough and receive pleasure from it, we want more of it, okay? That's just how we are as humans. Lastly, though, our youngest folks, again, they are not equipped to manage this. They need help. This is where they need help. This is where we can help them. So these are their notable uh, acquisitions. This is a company that has access to the best engineers, the best marketers, the best lobbyists, and they're unregulated. Okay, they have a monopoly. They have a ton of influence over our children and over our society. Three billion users. So this is, this is the type of company that our children are interacting, that we're interacting with every day. There are positive benefits to Facebook. We hear all the time how people have found lost loved ones, found adopted uh, children and so forth. So there are, there are good things that come from it, but are they doing enough, like Steve mentioned, when they have their own internal studies and they know that their platform or their products are not great for kids, how are they changing that? How are they improving that? We don't <laughs> uh, the phone is really like a lightning in a bottle, okay? They have immediate access to everything, basically. And the exposure piece is very concerning, right? We, we don't really know, right? Even video games are now played publicly, online. They're wired in together. We don't always know who's in, the, who's in those rooms playing, okay? We definitely don't know who's trolling the social media sites and looking at backing away and saying, okay, with my spouse or not, let's have a plan. Let's talk about this plan, put it into action, and stick to it. Okay. So I try to put together a list of things that we would like for all of us, especially for our young folks. So alert and connected to others and your surroundings. Socialization, okay. wanting to have that time with others. Being aware of the less fortunate and showing gratitude for the gifts that you have in your life. Not always wanting, Stopping and saying, you know what, I got, I'm doing pretty good here. Uh, healthy living in body, mind, and spirit. Okay? Not giving into the attraction of screen time and social media manipulation. Okay? Having the willpower to say, not for me. And then being self confident enough to have an active faith life outside of just attending church. Go beyond that. You know? Be of service. Find ways to do more than just attend church, which is important to them. Be of service, have an active faith life. And lastly, we're going to look at, at the end here. Will our young folks and will we commit to and sign the Being Present Pledge? And I'll show you that at the end. Okay, and that's something that we're circulating in the schools and presenting to our young folks and asking them to really think about their behavior and what they can do a little differently. And in doing so, bring back some of that connection with others. Day of night where there's, it's family time and no devices. Okay, that's time to do puzzles, watch a movie, just have family time or personal time for the child. Uh, there are ways where we can just start at home with what we know and monitor our screen time there. So start with our phones and check the settings because in the settings you can track screen time. Uh, video games, most of them have uh, parent controls. And then for internet surfing, there are filters that you can use. And at the end of this, this uh, portion, I have a whole list of resources for you, okay, that we'll, that we'll go over. Um, setting an age limit for your children before they are allowed to go on to social media. This is from Dr. Haight, who's a social psychologist. Big advocate for this. Why do they have to be on there at such a young age? Why? 
okay? And then encourage family TV viewing instead of individual binge watching. Get folks out of their rooms and get them into one room and get the popcorn out and watch a film, you know, watch it together. Get that time together, okay? Right, you wanna see how your kids, how their day was. And it's just hard to break, to, I call it arresting the issue. It's just hard to find that break, okay? So, step back away from it would be my advice. Sit down with your spouse, your partner, a friend, and write out a plan and say, this is what we're gonna do. You know, we're gonna take the, count, the console out of his room, we're gonna put it in the living room, we're gonna take devices out of the rooms during homework. And, you know, set your plan in place, share it, and then enforce it. Now, here's what's gonna happen. <laughs> uh, I don't know why I'm laughing, but so you're gonna say to your child, uh, no, you're not gonna play it. Let's, let's pick on the guys again. What kind of response do you get? Anger. Anger. Yeah. So, you know, Kula Ross, she had it right. You know, she said that they're gonna be in denial. So they're gonna say. No, you're not. And you're going to say, yeah, we are. We have already done it. Okay? And then they're going to get angry. Right? And then they're going to bargain with you. Oh, I promise I'll only do it a half an hour a day. Right? A half an hour a day. I won't do it anymore. Right? And then what happens? They get depressed. And this is really where our young folks shine. If, if, if they want us to know how upset they are, just really how depressed they are going to be. They're very good at showing. Don't cave. Okay, don't cave. And then lastly, they accept. And they will. They will. Because they will relish in that personal connection that they've lost. Because when you really talk to them, they want it. They really do want it. Our kids, Many of our kids are as concerned about this issue that we're talking about tonight as we are. They know it. They know it in here. Okay. Modeling appropriate behavior for young folks is critical. The more that we can show how we are not succumbing to it, okay, they benefit. Uh, two films that I would really recommend, The Social Dilemma and Disconnect. Okay, Disconnect is more of a drama. It's a longer film, but it is very poignant and it is is it'll change your view on things. It'll really, really reach, it'll touch you. Social Dilemma is more of a documentary, okay? So I recommend those two films to kind of, again, I, I hear from many parents where they will kind of storm into their child's room at nine o'clock at night and say, why are you still doing this and you haven't done your homework? Why is it taking so long? And instead of doing that, because that's, that usually it will not get you to where you want to be, right? It's just that moment. But if you pull back and really think through a plan and get support for that plan from your friends, your family, your spouse, your partner, your child or your children, they will truly understand that this is not a drill, okay? That you really mean it and it's for their benefit, for their both. When do they get moments alone just to enjoy the scenery and take a walk? Without their phone. Sharing a meal, completing schoolwork, I'll put my phone away or my game away. When I'm riding a bike or driving a car, when I am uncomfortable. One thing I'm seeing a lot of when young folks enter a room and they don't know where to go or who to talk to, they're on their phone because that's comfort. Okay? It's okay to be uncomfortable. It's okay to learn those skills to say, you know what? I don't like the way I'm feeling, but I'm gonna get the courage to walk over there and say hello to that person. And I'm gonna smile. But I can't do those things if I'm hiding into my phone. And that's what they do at dances, at football games. So thank you someone for showing appreciation. Put your phone away. Listening to someone, going to bed and sleeping, and watching TV.